My dearly beloved in Christ, we owe a great debt of gratitude to St. John the Evangelist for giving us the story of the first miracle of our Lord at Cana. And St. John wrote his gospel well after the other three gospels had been written. In fact, it was the last book of the New Testament that was written, the Gospel of St. John. And in this gospel, he tried to fill in the gaps and include what had not have been covered in the three synoptic gospels. And so again, we owe a debt of gratitude to St. John for giving us this wonderful story of our Lord in his per first public miracle, changing water into wine at the request of his mother. There are so many lessons that we can learn from this story in the gospel. And first of all, why was our Lord there? It is commonly believed that the bride or groom or both were relatives of our Lord and our Blessed Mother, or at least friends, and so they were there out of courtesy. It is believed by many that the groom was Simon, not Simon Peter, but the other apostle named Simon, because it says in Scripture that one of the twelve apostles was Simon from Cana in Galilee. At any rate, St. John Chrysostom says, Jesus was present at the marriage feast for five reasons. Number one, to pay respect to his kinsfolk and to honor their nuptials by his presence. Number two, to give an example of humility in being present at the marriage of poor people. Third, in order to assist the hosts of the wedding feast in their poverty and save their reputation by changing water into wine. Fourth, that by the miracle he might make himself known to his disciples and show them that he was indeed the Messiah. And fifth, that he might give his sanction to marriage and sanctify it by his presence, and so condemn the errors that would later arise disdaining marriage and the dignity and sanctity of marriage. Now, the scripture says the wine failing but the Greek word could more properly be translated since there was little wine, since it was insufficient, obviously because the bridegroom was poor and had only provided a small amount. And the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. Our Lord seemed almost to rebuke her because he said, what is it to me and to thee? Woman, my hour has not yet come. And he was indeed not in any way putting her off because at her request he performed this miracle. And maybe he said that in order to show us even more so the power of her intercession, but also to show us that one's affection for his loved ones must not come before doing the will of God. Now, this gospel, perhaps more than any other, shows us the wonderful intercessory power of our Blessed Mother. As you know very well, Protestants, non-Catholics have a difficult time understanding why we Catholics are so devoted to our Blessed Mother. Well, this gospel is one that you could point out to them. This shows us her wonderful power with her divine son, who will refuse her nothing. First of all, because of his indebtedness to her as his mother, but also because of her role, her dignity. Note that at the Annunciation, the angel praised Our Lady as full of grace and blessed among all women. And then again, when she visited her cousin Elizabeth, Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Ghost, it says in Scripture, praised Our Lady as blessed among women and blessed the fruit of her womb. Now we could not choose and did not choose our own mothers. No doubt we would not want to change anything with our mother. But were we capable of doing so, 
we would want our mother to be the most virtuous, the most compassionate, the most tender and loving, and the most beautiful of women. But what we were not capable of doing, our Lord was capable of doing. He chose his mother. He endowed her with all the gifts of virtue and grace that she would need to worthily be the mother of the Redeemer. And we can see thereby her greatness, her dignity. The fathers of the church point out that as the fall of the human race was brought about by the cooperation of a man and a woman, Adam and Eve, so the repairing of that sin, the redemption of the human race, should be accomplished by the cooperation of a man and a woman. That is Jesus and our Blessed Mother, who is called the New Eve, who by her humility and her obedience repaired the harm caused by Eve through her disobedience. Our Blessed Mother is in a rank, in a place all by herself, far above all of the other saints and holy persons who have ever lived because of her role, having been chosen to be the mother of the Redeemer. Our Lord, the Son of God, could have come into the world at the age of a full-grown man. Nevertheless, he chose to be born. He chose to be brought forth in birth by a woman, a virgin. And having chosen that means of coming into the world, he being God, no doubt would have made her the most perfect mother possible. And our Blessed Mother not only has this great dignity of being the mother of God, but she also has a tremendous intercessory power. Her son can refuse her nothing. And we see that here. Our Lady in her modesty simply said, they have no wine, indicating that she wanted her son to do something about it, to perform a miracle. But she didn't ask him to do it. She just simply pointed out a problem, knowing that he would take care of the embarrassment of this couple. But our Lord had not yet planned to work miracles. Nevertheless, at her request, he changed his timetable and worked his first public miracle. So we see again the intercessory power of our Blessed Mother. My hour has not yet come. And she didn't even answer him. She simply turned to the waiters and said, Do whatever he tells you. Knowing that he, the best of all sons, would not refuse the desire of her, the best of all mothers. Let us, in reflecting upon this gospel, grow in our confidence in our Blessed Mother and in her intercessory power, in her love for us, her children, her compassion for us. Notice that no one asked her to help this couple in their embarrassment. She observed it. And unasked, she resolved their problem. And so she is on the lookout to do good to her children. She loves us. She's concerned for our needs, above all, our spiritual needs. Let us have great confidence in this wonderful mother. And let us remember to use this gospel as a means of helping others who don't fully understand why we honor her as we do, to help them understand the role she has in God's plan and her tremendous intercessory power. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.